And welcome back, esports fans. We got more PCS Week Two, Day One, coming right back at you. I'm still Fire Tenix. He is still Clement, and we've had some fantastic games. But before we get into the last couple of them tonight, I do want to take some time to thank our lovely sponsors. Of course, they are CTBC Bank, China Airlines, and Chungwa Telecom. Thank you very much for making the PCS possible. Now, Clement, up next, we got Boom Esports coming back, and this time they're facing off against Impunity, who had a uh, a real rough day three last week. Yeah, Impunity had a bit of a calamity the last day of the week, but that aside, this is the match that I think I'm most excited about today. These two teams are the most even matched teams that you're going to get. You know, if you look at the next game, you'll understand the comparison. The contrast there is quite, quite <laughs> large. So, you know, Boom Esports versus Impunity, I do expect this to be, you know, all three lanes firing on all different cylinders. And I do think that Impunity can bounce back from what was a very, very tiring day. They had very, a lot of unfortunate circumstances where they had to play that extra game. I hope they can snap out of it. And I hope Boom Esports can also continue their, uh, their, their strength. Yeah, we'll take a look at Boom's lineup. They are making a roster swap in, of course. It will be Holo in the jungle, joining Rocky in the top side, Ruby in the mid, Waku and Pop down bottom. So they are doing a little bit of a swoopy swap. And now Holo has had a game already this split uh, up against the Brajaya Dragons. Respectable Diana performance. So um, I'm curious to see uh, if this continues, if they just go for uh, multiple jungle change-ups, just to see which one fits the best. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, holo, holo, solo, bolo. Uh, <laughs> I just made that up myself. I was going to say, how many he more you got there? definitely had a great game there. I'm getting kind of tired. I, I just say whatever is on my mind at this point. On the other hand, Impunity, goes. this is a team yeah. that, honestly, I, I just feel like they need to fix their early game mishaps, and they should still be fine. What we've been seeing so far is they statistically have the worst early game. They're, on average, behind by 3,800 gold. That's a lot lower than even uh, Leab at this point. And mm -hmm. we can't pinpoint, you know, specific uh, mistakes here. Moonblack has been solo killed in their last two previous games. And Smurf has also died without enemy jungle intervention. On the flip side, Top King is still positive. So <laughs> it's very clear what's happening. You know, you can't even really blame the jungles on this one. It's just Moonblack and Smurf have just been dying in lane to, to their opponents. They fix that. They can play the mid game a little bit more. Yeah, uh, excited to see if they're able to make it happen. Now, Top King versus Rocky will be our featured matchup for the day. And, and Top King, uh, I, I think definitely has been really showing some solid performances so far this split. It hasn't been enough to net his team too many wins, but that Viego in particular is always, is always a good pick for him. I like that he brought out the Gangplank. That was a fun one. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. I don't know if you remember the matchup right now, but... He was able to save his bot lane a couple of times, and uh, in the end, he didn't get to, to, to carry and win the game. But as we have talked about, the goal difference is really what's uh, what's stark about these two teams. Essentially, the rest of the map has been losing for top game. He's still been keeping afloat. While on the other hand, Rocky has been more of the weak side play uh, coming out from Boom Esports. So uh, for me, it's really about how these jungles can interact and prop up Rocky. On the other hand, it's about how far Top King can get ahead because the rest of the map might not be uh, doing so hot. Yeah, like how much can you carry out of that top position individually is always going to be a question to answer. Now we start off with the picks and bans. The Respect Heimerdinger ban, of course, always has to come in against the Impunity lineup. We will see the Xin Zhao Akali ban followed through Nocturne Thresh on the Impunity side. Um, and, you know, I, I think one question looking at this Impunity lineup is Moon Black's champion pool because his Heimer looked great, but, you know, the Silas, he gets solo killed in lane. It's not a great look. I'm, I wonder what else he's got in his pocket. A lot of question marks coming in from Moonblack. We even saw him flash his patented fiddle six in the previous draft. So I, I don't know. I don't think anyone really understands Moonblack's champion pool and how this guy's functions functions completely. So we may be in for a bit of a surprise right here. Uh, I will say what I what I do expect is just to take away the top lane power picks in most of these matchups. I think for Impunity, they can probably. 
Uh, if they have flex potential, this is something I noticed is that they share no flexes between Top King and Epic right now. So they might just have to go for priority picking. At this point, they, they don't really have the trick up their sleeve where they pick a Gwen and then, you know, swap it around. That hasn't been proven to be possible for them. So I do expect them to just go for power picks right now. Maybe snap in the uh, uh, the champions early. Or if they don't, then they're just going to leave, like, the uh, the last pick for Top King. But I think we're necked and open. You just take it at this point. Yeah, and they know, they know this matchup, right? I mean, you look at the nameplates, and Top King is going to be the one who bullies Rocky in this matchup. So they give him a strong champion like Renekton that he can try to take over with a little bit. They give Epic the mm -hmm. Diana. I remember Holo in his previous game in the PCS Summer here did play that Diana to some pretty decent success. He could still flex onto that Lee Sin. That's always a possibility. Um, but I think Imp Impunity trying to play to their strengths. <laughs> I do love... The fiddlesticks uh, hover for just a second. Now, you know, it's kind of funny. I didn't really even think about this before the matchup, but Ruby and Moonblack are the two the two PCS mid laners with the weirdest champ pools. So hey, it's almost anymore. a little disappointing that LeBlanc comes in. You know, I, yeah. I, I would have loved like the weird, like the Vlad fiddle matchup or something <laughs> like that. I, I think Ruby might have listened to our broadcast and figured out that Vladimir is actually just a shorter range and worse LeBlanc. <laughs> So he's just like, True. yeah, I think I think I should just pick LeBlanc at this point. On the yeah. other side for Impunity, there is a potential for Moonblack to be actually picking up this Renekton. In fact, I would prefer this Renekton if it was mid compared to going top. Usually when you're going top Renekton, you want a crowd control jungler that can make use of his early game hard crowd control. So when it's in mid lane, it makes a little bit more sense because he can cover up more of Diana's weaknesses in the early game. So if they go this way, it means that um, they still have a counter pick in the top lane for uh, uh, for Top King, and he could very well go for something like a Seder Wukong into the Gwen, seeing the entire lineup of Boomy Sport first. That, that's always a possibility. We'll see if uh, Impunity's got some trickery up their sleeves. In ban phase two here, it's all about that bottom side, Braum, then Ezreal banned away. I think Ezreal is, the Ezreal is probably the go-to ban away from Blaze this patch. I think this has been not been a very kind patch for Blaze. His best champions have been out of the meta. And he also happens to be the main carry on Impunity side. So when you have a meta that makes bot laners pretty much irrelevant, we haven't seen you know bot laners deal the most damage. And I, I don't think in any of today's games, maybe an Ezreal game or, or a Ziggs game. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Ziggs games... He, he was the most he dealt the most damage but let's be honest Ziggs isn't isn't even an 80 carry so i'm not even sure how much that counts it's yeah, basically a little bit out of not there. yeah it's not a very comfortable situation for him and ezreal has been the go-to i'm not sure if he's willing to play something that is low mobility like the varus like mm. if you typically look at the early aggressive comps and if you want crowd control then varus is kind of the answer here but he's uh, definitely a little looks... more comfortable on... I was going to say something like the Jinx. The Kai'Sa will make an appearance here. A little bit of a throwback to the spring. Uh, we'll Still see if viable, that works out for but him. a lot weaker. It does, doesn't really struggle. have the same burst potential as this pick has had before. So, you know, I think some teams have still been able to make it work, but you have to have the composition for it. What you're looking for is definitely something that is very burst focused, very single target focused, and your front line has to pack a lot of crowd control. So Impunity does have a good environment for this Kai'Sa pick. But then the flip side, the main reason the Kai'Sa has been falling out of favor is it's so hard to survive laning a phase against Kalista and Varus. And Boom Esports have both of those options open. They're going to snap one in. And they're also going to have an Alistar too. So we do expect Boom Esports just to have full shove in this lane. They should also have mid jungle priority. It's looking like a very powerful draft coming out from Boom Esports. And I really hope that Impunity can swap the Renekton out. Please, maybe. <laughs> they're still taking a minute to decide. I mean, yeah, this Galio seems much more likely to go into Moonblack's hands if it ends up getting locked in. And it does. Suppose there's still time there, Clement, but I'm not hopeful. This is a really risky comp from Impunity. This is basically the composition that RNG ran back in 2018. If you get a catch in your front line, Kaisa can follow up. It's a very strong pick composition, but it's also a bit of a one-punch composition. If your full combo doesn't wipe at least two members on the enemy team, you really lack the power to push through more damage. And if I'm looking at Boom Esports composition, 
maybe you get the Varus. I don't think you're going to be able to kill the Gwen and the LeBlanc with the mobility and the mist coming in. So yeah. right off the bat, I am favoring Boom Esports a bit with this draft. Yeah, and, and Boom are a little more hot at the moment, right? I mean, they've been able to find some wins. They've been able to pick things up. They've had a successful game already today. Impunity are trying to shrug off uh, a three-game losing streak at the moment, and it, it's tough to do that. It's early in the split, but still, that starts to weigh down on you. The fact that they all happened on the same day, too, doesn't necessarily help. Uh, and, you know, if, if you're Boom, I think we're starting to see some of the limits of Moonblack's champion pool when that Heimerdinger is banned away. It's such a weird thing to say in 2021, but what can you do? Uh, Moonblack on this Galio is going to try to make it work. They're going to try for that one-punch combo. It's always a possibility, but they need to be in the right place at the right time, and Boom are well aware of this, and they have got a lot of mobility tools to avoid that fate. I will say Top King's Renekton versus the uh, Gwen is a matchup that we can tell that he's very, very much first at. We got that level 3 solo kill coming in from him. So he knows the ins and out of this one. Maybe he can claw something back. But I really feel like this draft at the start of it is asking a lot from Top King. If you look across the map, his bot lane is going to get shoved in 100%. Lee Sin plus LeBlanc gets free reign over mid jungle. And if you're Renekton, that's really uncomfortable because it's hard for you to push your lead. The jungle could be coming. The mid could be coming. The, the, the support could also be coming. So they're asking a lot from Top King to keep them afloat until they get their level six ultimates. And I'm, I'm not so sure that he can do it. Well, they're going to have to hope he is, in fact, the Top King. Because uh, if he's only a Top Baron or a Top Count, I don't think that's going to be enough this game. Clement, take a look at the runes to kick things off in this game. Uh, impunity. Putting a lot on their top laner. But they do have a combo. A wombo of a combo. It's just, you know, it does seem like wombo combos are getting harder and harder to pull off this day and age. It definitely does feel like that. You have too many champions that can just a are untargetable. You have Viego coming from the top lane. You have Gwen who can't be targeted. There's just too, ma too much mobility and too much um, untargetability to really make wombo combos work in this meta. And talking about the setup so far, we do see Rocky with the Ignite. This is something that you take when your lane opposition is a very strong champion like the Renekton. And also bonus points for uh, checking out Diana because Diana is not usually going to have that much impact in the early levels. So you are having a bit more leeway to go for the offensive summoner in this case. I do think it's a pretty good idea to do it. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense for sure. Rocky going to try to uh, even a little bit of the odds here in this matchup. The top king should be very familiar with, very confident in. And just in general, the caliber of, of uh, the way these two have played so far in this split and just in general. Top king certainly known for being a stronger player overall than Rocky. But we'll see how it all shakes out. We get ourselves started up and... Yeah, I, I think Impunity, the real struggle for them is just the, the fact that a lot of the champions they like to play are... You know, maybe a little outmoded, maybe a little outdated. We'll see if this Kaisa can do uh, enough in this game. But yeah, you can already start to see the poke coming in from that Varus. Ooh, Rocky going in early onto Top King. Level 1 action. He gets two early. Yeah, really good level 2. Nice gets the E in. And I have to say, this is some of the best starts that we've seen Rocky have. He dodged out of the first Call the Meek coming in from Top King and was able to get a pretty good damage trade on the flip side. In the meantime, this bot lane, you don't... Oh, Smur... Did he... Yep, he it goes in he for the trade. Yeah. I mean, this yeah, is the most action we've seen bot in a while. I, I will say I'm a little bit worried. We have seen Smurf just die 2v2 because he took a tower shot. This has happened on both sides of the map, so... Uh, this is definitely what I'm keeping my eyes on. Laning phase is the first part of the game that Impunity needs to improve on. They have to get through it. Now, it, it's it, it's really bad for a sixth place team to have the worst early game out of our 10 L, uh, PCS teams. Uh, even Liap has improved so damn much that uh, Impunity now find themselves with a very undesirable crown. Um, in the meantime, looking across the map, as we suspect, Holo is going to have easy time with the Scuttles. I don't really think that Epic can even contest at this point. He is just going to drop the top side and fold into the bot. Um, and this is going to make... Uh, make Top King's life fairly uncomfortable. You know, he's going to have a lack of vision. He's going to be pushing out. 
and he'll also know that th this Lee Sin should be on his side of the map. So I don't think Top King can go for many trades. And right now for Impunity, their game plan is just sit tight, you know, forego the trades. Let's just make sure we hit six before we do anything drastic. Yeah, playing on the weak side, not just in the top. Well, the top is actually playing on the stronger side. But uh, as you mentioned, Top King may think twice about going in on the all-ins. There's always the possibility of Holo being somewhere. Ooh, Ruby getting Ooh. knocked up. There's the taunt, and Epic coming in to try and make a play, actually forcing Ruby out of lane and giving Moonblack some breathing room. Really beautiful coordination right there. No flashes used, but gets the pin down on the wall and forces Ruby into an awkward position where you know, he's going to have a lot of time picking that up. And uh, we might see Moonblack even be able to head back to lane without really using a TP here. So uh, good move on his part. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely what Impunity are, are looking for in this. They just want to try and survive out that laning phase. Uh, Top King shoving a wave in and pushing it back. It seems like he recovered from that level two very handily. Uh, no surprises there for Top King. Smurf will come back into the lane to help out Blaze. Keep, keeping an eye down on bottom. No major mistakes, but now we start to see the limits of what this Kai'Sa can do in the early game. Just being zoned away from a lot of farm. Level differential, farm differential. And it means that maybe some of the best things Smurf can do is just try to secure up a lot of vision. You do see a fair amount of Impunity Ward coverage around the Dragon. They're not going to let this go up early and uncontested, especially with the likes of Holo there. Really nicely done on Impunity side here. You can see the pings on the bottom side wards. They're thinking about a 4v2 dive into the bottom lane. Boom Esports is going to be very pushed up with Wako, and he's not really been known for surviving ganks either. So <laughs> I think Impunity definitely have it in mind. Once they hit this level 6, they will use a hero's entrance with the globals and burst damage to just punish uh, uh, Wako for pushing up too aggressively. And we'll see what countermeasures that Boom Esports has right here. If their jungle path is towards the top side, that just means that Moonblack is going to be able to hit level 6 without Holo being able to intervene. We'll see if that will be the case here. Actually, a pretty smart move by Holo here. He's actually going to move down towards the bottom side in anticipation. There's already a little bit of uh, aggro from Impunity trying to make the play, but not really finding a whole lot of anything. And yeah, Holo going to clear out some wards. Does get spotted by Impunity in the river. Coverage pays off. Teleport back in for Moonblack. Does have his ultimate ability now. Still waiting on level 6 for a couple more. Bottom lane going to be a little far behind. And Impunity is just happy to keep this game nice and steady at the moment. Yeah, they definitely need to wait for their globals to really come online for this one. This is definitely oh not a fight they want to take. Smurf that position. stepped very far forward for that, but there is the hero's entrance, and maybe they try to make something happen here, but oh no, a lot more. Members oh, brought goodbye, to Smurf. the party. Varus getting the first blood on Smurf. That was a decent idea, but definitely bad timing. He just took way too much free damage before the TPs could come down, and you can see Hero's entrance, even though it buys him just a bit, he still gets sniped out by Wako at the very end. At, uh, uh, actually, he did have his flash, so that was a preventable death, uh, but unfortunately, he wasn't able to execute on it. Yeah, so Boomer able to find something in this early game and uh, burn a lot of their globals to make sure that the fight that didn't end up happening would go in their favor. Oh, Moonblack. Finding he can get a little more aggressive onto the LeBlanc now. He's always looking for that taunt, and he has Smurf roaming. Looks like they want to make a play for mid, but Ruby's wise to this one. Pops also come up to help. Will Epic be the difference? Ah, nothing's going to happen. Seems like now. it's going to be a straight Herald play. This is, this is pretty risky, but at the same time, I can see why they, they might be going for this one, um, because they do still have that Moonfall plus Dominus up there. Dominus is huge when it comes to these early game skirmishes. They do think better of this. Um, I think it... Yeah, they're, they're, they're not... They're going to call it off. I felt like it was a little bit risky without Heroic Entrance to really be going for this one, and bot lane's also very far behind in tempo. So, it was kind of a questionable play, and I, I'm glad that Impunity don't pull the trigger it would have been very dangerous now boomy sports on the other hand have no such scruples about this Polo is going to go ahead yep. and start soloing out the rift herald he will be bringing pop to join him and wako uh so big roam from the bottom side rocky going to be here as well good use of the timing from the backs on impunity to secure up the first rift herald 
And Holo, uh, unlike Hana, does pick it up. So this is actually a decent uh, win for Impunity. I feel like Boom Esports actually over-rotate here. Uh, they didn't need their bot lane whatsoever. So Impunity do get a little bit of respite, even though it doesn't seem like it. You know, the enemy team gets an objective. But you want every single little edge that you can find on the map in situations like this. And I have to say the margins of error are really small for Wombo Combo comps this time. You have extremely long cooldowns, Ooh. two plus minute cooldowns on something like Galio. So you need every single one to work. I like this from Impunity. They rotate up for the dragon and nobody's there to respond. We'll be able to secure Infernal. Uh, now Holo does go up top side here. So Top King may face his first big test. Does have the Dominus, will need it most likely. Rocky going for the bait. And Holo comes around the side, gets the kickoff onto the Gator, and Rocky turns him into a pair of boots. A really beautiful bait by Rocky. It seemed like Rocky accidentally uh, used his E in the wrong position right in front of the minion wave. Top King seizes, takes the bait instantly. He's like, haha, I have slice and dice that can go twice. And Rocky says, well, you just fall into my trap. Reveals Holo on the side. There's nothing Top King can do after that. Yeah, get that man an Oscar. That was some grade A acting as Shelly spawned right on top of the tower. We'll get that finisher, and first turret of the game goes in favor of Boom Esports. Nicely played. Really sold it, you know. These days, outside of the Oscar, I sometimes want to say that they can play in the NBA as well. It's just like, oh, the finals <laughs> have got me so riled up about refereeing. Um, but, you know, great play, and I, I, I'll be honest, this is kind of what I expected to happen given this draft. There's way too much pressure that's going to leak through on the bottom side uh, for Top King to really do anything. Essentially, he is relegated to a weak side Renekton. Uh, which is not what you want to be uh, if you are one of Impunity's uh, more consistent players, for sure. But uh, going to try to hold the line for a little while, at least. However, that is not the win condition for Impunity. We keep talking about that Wombo combo. They're trying to hold on. The gold lead in favor of Boom. But I do think that Infernal Dragon does make a pretty big difference for this side. Yeah, every bit of damage helps when you're trying to one-shot targets here. Um, Infernal definitely one of the most valuable ones. And I, I think the Drake stacking is also fairly important for this team. You, you want people to be grouped up. One of the best ways I've seen this sort of composition be executed is you actually let the opponent team funnel themselves into the Drake pit where they're very concentrated and then you hit them with the hero's entrance. That gives you uh, a much more guaranteed wombo combo. A lot of times the Varus has to flash out of the pit to even be saved from that scenario. And I think that's something Impunity can consider right here. You can go in late to the team fight. Epic just flies in, you layer the heroic entrance on him and then all hell breaks loose. Yeah, then maybe Waka will uh, find the tables turned on him. But for the time being, man, he is just punishing Blaze and Smurf uh, for their inferior range at the moment. A lot of junglers sniffing around. Both sides teleports coming in. It looks like they want to go for the plan to walk oh, the flash him. into. He does cleanse out of it, but they invest so much into him. The taunt and they commit to it. Moon Black with the finisher looking for that wombo combo and the rest of Boom running backwards. Another Zenith Blade this time does not connect. But for the heavy investment, Impunity do manage to get one kill for none. Yeah, that was three flashes for Wako's sums. Um, this is a bit of a gamble. It's immediate gold right now. But when the upcoming Drake fight does hit, it, it also means that they're going to lack a lot of explosiveness. So uh, I definitely think that given all of the resources expended here, it's actually still slightly favorable for Boom Esports. I, I think they've got a massively better chance when it comes to the net straight fight, but you can snowball this as we are seeing on our side screen. Yeah, they're certainly trying, but Rocky does take down Top King and gets Ooh. a double kill onto Moon Black. Well, that's certainly the opposite of snowballing if you're Impunity. Four to one now, the kill line. And uh, wow, okay. So Rocky's just got two kills in his pocket, and he can start turning that into some pretty items. Really rough, especially if you're looking at the uh, objective fight coming up next. Rocky's going to be in super fed. He can rotate faster. He has the TP. He has some advantage to see what happened right here. I'm not sure what Top King is doing here, though. Yeah, his positioning huh. was a little questionable. Flashes out, kind of baits his teammate. Yeah, that's definitely a mistake coming in from Top King. I, 
I, I just don't know what he's doing there, and he just pays yeah. the ultimate price for it. Also, it, it feels like it's a rule of the PCS that every time there's a replay, there has to be action that starts right in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I agree so far with that's you. happened today. We'll, we'll see how Impunity decide to play this one out. I think it's really difficult. They don't get Wako with the Ooh. stun. Great defense from Pop. Oof. Blocks it up. Subumi well, they were definitely forcing that one. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can see how hyphy this Impunity bot side is getting, but you gotta be careful now. Polo is here. So is Epic, but he's not quite as close. And they know the dive's coming. Or at least the play was coming, but that's gonna be Dragon play. Uh, I don't think they can test this. They're just, they're backing away. Yeah, just too many summoners expended at this point. A lot of cooldowns down as well. No Heroic's entrance, no ultimate coming from Leona. They have to give this one away. And this is why the Wombo Combo comp is so hard to play. Like, you, you really need multiple kills every time you chain your ultimates together. And against Ooh. someone like LeBlanc, that's that's just hard. Oh, whoa, hard. Moonblack trying to walk away from it, but just burns away oh. from Hollow and Epic getting <laughs> kicked back. And it feels like it's a highlight reel for individual players every couple of fights. And Holo picks up his two on that one with some fancy footwork. Starts off another Rift yeah. Herald. I mean, it's always around the objectives. Boom Esports got their eyes on the prize when it comes to making the plays. It seems like Impunity, they're just playing for kills. And they've only got one. The comp is made for kills, but the amount of resources they need to expend just getting a single kill against these carries is so difficult, you know? It was a great move coming in from Baco, although it is a standard move, to bring the cleanse here and just make sure that Impunity's wombos never work. And unfortunately, I think that's been the case. It's I don't think we've really seen the wombo combo work in any of our PCAS games so no. far. It's, it just, just look at the mobility that Ruby has here. Even uses the Mimic on the chain and still has a distort for two Gap closers to get out of there. On the flip side, they get the kill with the red smite, and Holo picks up a second piece. So, kill. yeah, it's, uh, it's it's getting really dire, and I I really feel like Impunity need to save their ultimates for crucial moments where they know they can get multiple kills. I think what I suggested, where you know maybe they let Boom Esports get on the objective first and then corner them into a dragon pit, is probably one of their better plays. Right now, it just doesn't seem like getting a pick on LeBlanc is ever going to be possible. Yeah, and they have to hold on here. You can't let yourself get run over before you get to that point where you feel confident in the team fighting. And you know they got their cooldowns back up here, but as you mentioned, it was such a heavy investment just to take down the Varus. And when your combo can be countered by a summoner spell. Uh, that's not a great feel. Definitely isn't. And if you think about the targets that they can hit, there's so few. You're, you're never going to get a Lee Sin. You're never going to get a Lee Blanc LeBlanc. And Gwen can just drop the Mist, which disables most of your targeting. So, <laughs> the only real target they can focus on is Wako. And if there's only one target that you can focus, the enemy team is going to know that too. I, I honestly feel like Wako, if he just plays safe enough, which admittedly isn't Wako's strong suit, e Boom Esports are fine. They're basically untouchable. We are seeing the ward getting pinged down here and Impunity are going to try. They should try to throw everything on Wako. Forget about LeBlanc. Forget about Holo. Wako's your only viable target. Here we go. That's going to be the teleport. Let's see if they can make the play happen. Around the back comes Top King. Dominus already popped. And speaking of pop, they go onto him, but he's a big beefy cow. And he's able to tank out the damage. Oh, and the in a couple more on that Moonfall. Epic not enough, and the hero's entrance is just short. Epic's going to burn away, but no, he gets healed up by Blaze. Not enough to save the team, though, as Olo just starts going huge. The turn around, they managed to get Rocky, but that is all Impunity will grab. As it's a two for one trade, and I don't think Boom Esports are done. The oh, flash, the flash forward and the snipe for the double kill for Wako. Epic trying to save the day with Blaze. Blaze gets it. Looking for shutdowns. He's got one. Can he get the right Ruby? Oh, Blaze. Can you save the day? Oh. You can. Red Team's turret has been destroyed. Oh, and Champion Mastery wins through on the day. They managed to trade. Oh, uh, it's still a disadvantage trade, but. It was pretty cool to see Blaze get all that gold, and I think we see a glimmer of hope from Impunity. With that much gold focused on his back, he's going to be able to slide into that um, into that execution item very easily and very quickly early on, which gives him a lot of viable targets. Now, 
this this team fight I think perfectly illustrates how lopsided the compositions are. If you look at Epic here, he actually has a great start to the fight. He gets a three-man moonfall, and the heroic entrance doesn't even land on a single target. That's just nice. how difficult this comp is to play against what Boom Esports has drafted. Very disheartening to see. As you can see, the Wombo combo falls apart. Everyone has to run away. They're very lucky to have that tower there, or else the rest of the members from Boom Esports would have just chased this down without a, without any hiccups. The flash, uh, flash hit from Waco really secures up the one kill, but then Blaze kind of goes for the hero. Epic does get taken down by Ruby, and I, I do think, yeah, that's the silver lining that Blaze now has a lot of gold in his pocket, and that's kind of what Impunity were hoping for. But they paid so highly to make it happen, and. They're still losing out on a lot of towers. The objective's starting to fall. Dragon's about to spawn in a couple of seconds. And, you know, Boom still just have a good hold on this game. And it's going to be up to Impunity to try and find those hero plays. And the execution just has to be flawless. All I want to say is, in Blaze, we trust. I have seen the most ridiculous plays from Blaze, where you 1v3 to get Impunity back into the game and actually take over the win. Blaze has done some incredible things, and he is fed. He's pre-20 minutes with the Collector. He can delete Waco whenever he wants to. So I, I think, you know, it opens up a couple more avenues for Impunity. I feel like they can start on the front line, use that as a distraction, and then just go straight for Waco. Maybe that's going to be the play uh, later down on the line. But I'm, I'm just not counting in them out yet because I have faith in Blaze. Never over till it's over. You're absolutely right. Impunity have a chance to snap that losing streak, but it will not be an easy journey. And there's a lot of threats on this boom side. Uh, Ruby steps forward into three. Well, he doesn't know entirely that there, but uh, he's perfectly fine because everybody doesn't want a piece of him. <laughs> I think they learned from their previous attempts uh, at what happens when you try to catch out LeBlanc. She makes you look like a fool and then Holo picks up a double kill. So they're like, ah, yeah, we, we, we didn't really like that episode. We're, we're, we're going to try for a different take this time. Yep, big ol' misdirect. Now, Baron is the next priority here. Uh, even though it's very early on in the game, they just have a lot of vision secured up for it. Rocky on the side lane push. Doesn't have teleport just yet, so he's going to have to walk the long way if something were to happen. But for Impunity, they need to get it all together. Cooldown still going on the teleports. Hero's entrance is in for Moon Black, though, if they want to make that kind of play, at least... A little more locally. And they decide to focus their energies on the mid lane, see if they can get a push going. Yeah, they're probably going to transition this into their own topside jungle. This is a standard way of getting control back on your side of the map. You force the enemy to show mid before you can go into it. But unfortunately for them, uh, Impunity do not get the rotation fast enough. They still lose their top lane tower. And Smurf is spotted out, so I, I don't expect much to really happen right here. Uh, I do want to point out that Rocky has went for the Cosmic Drive instead of the Nasher's Tooth. This does give him a lot more tankiness and also a lot more movement speed, so he can potentially catch up the Blaze when he does decide to come in. You, you don't really need the extra attack speed and damage to take down an AD carry that runs at your face. So mm -hmm. I, I do quite like this buy. It's not really a solo split push buy. It's more of a team fight oriented buy, and the extra HP goes a long way given Impunity's burst tendencies. Yeah, and I think Boom know that that's how they're going to win this one. They can try to push people on the side all day, but Impunity will bring their entire team to the party, so you might as well be prepared for that eventuality. Yep, and uh, talking about builds, we also have a death cap. That's, yeah. That's one I haven't seen in, in quite a while, you know? I remember, it's Ruby. Uh, it's Ruby playing <laughs> this champion, so I, I feel like all of your normal analytical points are always going to be a little bit of a, a question mark, right? Uh, the Ruby, thing about death um, cap and why it's so rare is it requires you to actually s s uh, stack up on a lot of money before you can get that item. The build path is not very hospitable. There's not a lot of components. It's just double big rot. So it, it just goes to show you how fed Ruby has been in this game. You know, he He's really not been in any mortal danger and he's been able to uh, basically rely on the, the team's lead to get him a big ticket item early. Ooh. They're going to go for the bait oh. themselves, looking for Smurf once again. 
And I think they might just have the damage there. Not quite. The shields are big. Hero's entrance. They need to pull the them bullet. back. Do manage to find all one. one. And Blaze takes down all of Do they have more? That's the double true. kill. Looking for it. It's going to be Top King taking another. And that could be Baron, Clement. Let's blaze it. He's finally doing what God made him to do. This is amazing uh -huh. play coming in from Meme Impunity. The bait and then the counter bait. Just making sure they draw everyone in. And Epic got a great Moonfall. The two-man uh, collapse there allowed Blaze enough time to go on the target. But they have to secure the Baron in order to call this a W. There's a lot of poke from Waco right now. This is getting very dangerous. Look at how low Epic is. There won't be a smite after this one. And they need to peel them off going solo. Finally, they, got it. they will secure it. Moonblack pays for that with his life. Top King trapped in the pit. Epic's going to die. They get Blaze the Baron, but will they get out? Oh my goodness, the madman. He goes in. Blaze tries to take down Waco, but he says, not today, good sir. And a triple kill picked up by the Vars. Yeah, probably not the play that the, uh, <laughs> they needed right there. But it was, it was kind of ballsy, it was kind of ballsy. At the end of the day, let's see, how many members do Impunity still keep like, with the Baron buff? Two. They still have two. Not enough to cover all of their defensive lanes at the same time, but I gotta survive uh, this it's, first, though. it's at least a good stall mechanic. Oh, they definitely will. It's too early okay. in the game. Yeah, it's, it's only 24, 25. Uh, I got a little excited. Let's take a look at that play again. They do secure... Oh, this is, this is all the way going way back to the Ruby play and the counter bait. Yeah, I, I don't think they should have went for a Smurve. I feel like going for Smurv is is just the, not the right call. The support is not worth overextending for. And just look at Epic. Before he goes into the Zhonya, at the very last second, he gets the Moonfall. And that was also a beautiful Everfrost coming in from Moonblack. The double root coming down, allowing Blaze to get everything on the map right here. And we're seeing signs of life from the Singaporean squad. This fight was also really close, but unfortunately Wako does miss, I think, the uh, two other piercing arrows right here. Doesn't really get Blaze into the back line. Could have gone for Epic as well, but as you can see, doesn't have vision here. So Epic does stay alive to get the steal. Uh, not the steal, to get the secure. Yeah. What Blaze was thinking right here? Blaze? I think Blaze just said, I can, I can outplay. Like, I think he bought into his own hype a little bit that way, because, yeah, he should have absolutely walked away from it. Uh, meanwhile, after that replay, we did see in the bottom of the screen, uh, Boom was busy securing themselves another Mountain Dragon. Uh, so they will be on Soul Point now. Uh, and with the Baron buff on two, Impunity still have a chance. Also, they, they critically, they took it off the map, right? Like, even if nobody had survived, at least Boom didn't have it. But uh, they got to try to make something of what they got at the moment. It's going to be a little difficult up against this four-man. As uh, Top King has been relegated to playing that weak side and now relegated to just trying to wave clear. We do have to mention the biggest winner of all these skirmishes is probably Wako. Wako's been behind throughout most of the mid game, but with that play alone and a massive shutdown coming from Blaze, he's now overtaken in terms of the uh, finish item count, and he has a 700 gold bounty on him. So, uh, yeah. yeah it, the thing about this change is Impunity have to go immediately uh, once Boom Esports set up the Siege. They cannot allow Wako to get any poke down. If Wako just lands one piercing arrow, I don't even think Blaze can, can go in anymore. He, he's probably just going to have to go back to Fountain. So Impunity have a very, very short window to execute any sort of defense. Yeah, that's the tough one for sure. Now, they also do have a little bit of a window on that Flash. Uh, of Wako, so that is something they can work with for a short amount of time here, too. Uh, Top Ooh. King getting the wave clear. Just through. Not gonna spend that slice and dice to try and start something. Rocky hitting level 16 on the Gwen. Rejoins the team. And they just control so much of the map here, but there's no other objectives to take, so it is all about these towers. And the Baron buff not Impunity really helping out much. We'll give this one up. And probably just wait to defend inhibitors. You can yeah, see Epic here low. just taking one piercing arrow. It's just, it's brutal. It's brutal what Waco can do to this team. Ooh, 400 damage on a Leona <laughs> early yep. on. So this is the moment of truth. The next minion wave, if uh, Boom Esports decide to push it. Oh, it looks like they're just going back for a back though. So you know, I think Impunity did a pretty good job in defending. They slowed the uh, second tier tower to at least three waves and made sure that Boom Esports felt uncomfortable enough 
to go back for the major buy. I will say this is a pretty big buy, though. If you look at Ruby, he's already finished his Void Staff at this point. He's oh going to shred through Embar. That's that's a that's a yikes for me. A very, very scary front line and finish items across the board. Yeah, old school LeBlanc build. All right. Uh, so Ruby has definitely played a, a pretty solid baiting LeBlanc in this one. He hasn't really been, um, you know, securing all of the kills up, but that's perfectly fine when you can give them over to well, the likes of Waco or Rocky or Holo. I mean, it, it, they're, they're doing quite well this game. And Impunity, they're just trying to hang on. They're just trying to find that combo. They're definitely not out until that Nexus falls. But Boom are stacking up every possible advantage in their favor. The Baron. And I think... It's up in a minute, Clement. The key for this one is really when Blaze uses his Killer Instinct. He needs to create enough distraction from his front line in order to go into the back line and, and not be opposed and be able to kill a lot, of, a lot of these targets out. So that's a crucial moment is when Blaze pulls the trigger, when he decides that, okay, I expended enough of the enemy crowd control, they probably don't have enough for me, and I have the HP to just do one-for-one -one trades. That's going to be the critical moment right here. Uh, but the way Boom Esports play this is also fairly simple. They just make enough of a buffer zone, uh, or they could just catch Epic. That's, that also yeah, works. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I think I got a splash out of that. Oh, boy. Create right, enough well... of a buffer zone and just go for Baron. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's kind of what the game plan is. You know, it's 10 seconds away. Um, they're going to go ahead and set up Vision. If they can get somebody to face check and go for the turn, you know, all the more all the more excellent. This team's just so slippery. They can just get in, get out. They're going to go ahead and start it off, and it does get spotted. But they have a pretty strong turn here. Ruby and Pop waiting around the side. Up against this the is great from Impunity. They managed to not go through their own jungle where most of the death rushes are, but now they have to force their engage or they're just going to get poked out. Smurf just can't do anything here. And oh no, they've got Top King. There is a big pull in. The hero's entrance is going to land on to just one there. The mist was too quick, but do they have enough fight? Another Zenith Blade comes through with Smurf. It's instantly deleted. And this fight was over after those ultimates were spent. A clean... Five for zero, Boom Esports dominating. Impunity were too indecisive. If you're in that situation, you've already cleared the mid wave. The enemy team is on Baron. They're grouped up together. You have to front push them into the pit and make sure you get the Wombo combo off. Sure, you might not win the game. It's a low percentage play, but it's pretty much the only play you got. In fact, hey. uh, instead, Impunity, they gave the front uh, the first strike over to Boom Esports, and Boom Esports just executed two tiers above Impunity's level. They find a sweet win with this one, and I, I think unfortunately we have to say that this kind of felt like one of those draft losses that we've seen a lot of times in this game. It's just Impunity drafted them something that was incredibly difficult to execute. They could not expect them to have any sort of leverage in the bot lane or in the mid jungle given their Diana and Kai'Sa picks. And Renekton, your, your best player, essentially, was became relegated to a weak side. Renekton had a couple of mishaps. You know, we, we do have to point those out. Top King did die kind of needlessly twice in the early game. And right. that, that just was kind of it. They were never able to get a full Wombo combo on Wako. I don't think we've seen a single time where two ultimates were able to land on Wako in quick succession. Yeah, it, it was just so tough to do it. And and while they were focusing so heavily on Waco, the rest of the team was slowly stacking up items, slowly stacking up gold. Um, and by the time, you know, they tried to pull the trigger, it was just a little too late. Yeah, you're right, a little indecisiveness. I think Impunity really have to start going back to the drawing board because these drafts have just not been working for them. Um, they're starting to get, the games just start to get out of hand so quickly. And it seemed like, you know, this, this might be an opponent. Boom, of course, had been on a bit more of a hot streak, but I was going to say, Maybe an opponent, opponent they, that they could uh, start to turn things around with, but it seems like there's a lot of, of growth and a lot of work still to do for Impunity. And as for their opponents, as for Boom, they can go home very happy today with what they've been able to accomplish. Two wins on the day, a very strong performance, good poke, good siege, uh, and we saw Ruby on a LeBlanc, serviceable. <laughs> Hooray! Maybe the build is a little strange, but like, I mean, that, that was always the biggest question mark for this side, right? Like. You know, his Vlad, once that got figured out, what has he really got in his pocket? He pulls out the LeBlanc, he does just fine. 
He sets up baits for the rest of his team. Um, I really liked what I saw to Boom today. It, it was fantastic. Hey, as long as he just leaves Vladimir in the Balkans, I'm happy. You know, it, it really should not be an 11.13. That's that's not the not the scenario for him. And it's good to see. I, I also want to commend on Wako that this was actually a very uh, very cool game from him. You know, we we have harped in a lot of previous games. He does tend to throw down the gauntlet and go for challenges when people try to target him. He doesn't like giving up his ground. But in this game, he definitely read the win conditions quite well. Um, on the flip side, I don't understand from Impunity. To me, Impunity, and I think to most of our viewers, Impunity probably has a very straightforward path to, to how they want to draft. You're on red side, you give Top King the last pick. You give him counter pick. He's your best performing player. Not, none of your players on the rest of the map are, are positive GD at 10 or at 15. And uh, if you didn't know, uh, Top King is plus 600 gold at 10. So, yeah, that, you know, that was a head scratcher for sure. Like, it, it was yeah. very strange that... They could have gone for the swap, put Renekton into the hands of Moonblack. You're like, you got to think, okay, you know, I mean, maybe th maybe this guy can do it. Maybe Moonblack just felt like, no, he can't play that type of champion. I don't know. It, it, it just feels like there's something off about Impunity at the moment. There's something missing. And maybe they're just trying to find that extra ingredient. But yeah, like it, if you can't give your top laner the thing that he needs to get ahead, and he's the win condition so far, or at least the strongest player, then what are you doing? But... For our player of the game, it will be Holo stepping into that jungle role uh, instead of Alex for this game. And he steps up big on the Lee Sin. I think everybody did what they needed to do, but Holo definitely set up a lot of those plays. It's a complete tangent, but I feel like Holo is join, like joining the roster late. So this is probably a Photoshop. His head did not look that big compared to his <laughs> when we saw him in the live game. That's, yeah, that's definitely you know, the case, quite, but... quite possibly. Um, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't really thought to try and do complete the tangent, planet, but I'm glad that you had the eye for that one because uh, I, I, you know, very you know I, I majored anthropology, and you know we have phrenology where you me measure like the heads of uh, different ethnicities <laughs> and all that. And I'm like, man, that that is definitely a specimen. But I, I def that's that's I I, I saw him in, in person. Game and I'm out. Like, yeah, that's 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 definitely a Photoshop. Uh, gone wrong for him <laughs> but i i want to give a com i, I want to say that he played this game so well like he was on point uh throughout most of the uh, skirmishes on this lee sin i felt like what he did really well was that he read the win conditions and he knew that he didn't have to force things at all like mm -hmm. if you just draw out the composition from impunity you don't need to go too aggressive with the lee sin pick like he did one or two counter jungles against diana but he didn't really force it into the enemy jungle that much and give up his lead so far he was just happy to play the counter ganking role and show up on time and he did a really good job on it yeah i mean when you know what impunity was trying to do it did seem like they had the number from the minute one and just played and countermeasured whatever they needed to so a fantastic win there for boom now we have got one more game here for week two day one so don't go anywhere the pcs will return right after this break